We are out in Sugarland this morning. I think Sugarland. Going to do a little bee removal. They're up here on the roof of this house. They're up in a soffit. It's that clay tile roof. I just took a walk back there to kind of start to get an idea of what I got to do. And then I'm going to get the truck get unloaded. I've got my big extension ladder just so I can get up on the roof. It's a nice house. Um, and then I've got to get up there and see. I'm, it appears they're in the soffit. I don't know where else they could be up there, but I've had these clay tile roofs kind of trick me before because the bees will get down through between the tiles and get down into a lower roof line or something like that. So we're just going to get the ladder set up, climb up there and have a look and uh, go from there. Right here in this lower soffit. Of course, their point of access is right back where the soffit hits the roof, uh, the shingles, or in this case, the clay tiles, because there's never a good joint there. So they should be in the soffit right above it. There's nowhere else really for them to be either. You know, there's that's roof line going up, that's roof line going up. So, unless they're in some sort of weird interior structure, but not likely. So, we'll get our vac set up, get our power run up here, um, and get our grinder to get them cut open. I got a bunch of setup work I got to do, get the smoker and everything going, and I got to really be careful because these clay tiles, I didn't do that one. Well, somebody in the past did, but I was warned, be careful getting on the roof because someone got up there before and broke a tile, clearly and crawling around on these things, they sit here and they, they creak and they pop and it just makes you nervous. I don't care for them myself, but it's not my house. Anyway, we get set up, we'll get to cutting on it. All right, well, we're fixing to start cutting on it and I went ahead and put my suit on just because of where I'm at. God forbid they're nasty, which the ones on the southwest side of town sometimes are feistier. Uh, but yeah, they're right up here. I think I've got to try to maybe lay it on my back on this roof, which is kind of comfortable, but it's going to be really uncomfortable to be working backwards over my head like this, at least to start cutting the soffit out. Once I get the soffit out of the way, then I gain a little bit of head space to reach up in there. Uh, but it's not going to be happy starting off. Uh, I've got my hoses and such actually tied up here. This is awfully pretty proud of this. I went ahead and tied them off with a piece of string there on that gutter hook and then I laid the hose and the cord in the gutter to get them up here where I need them. A lot of times when I'm working on top of ladder my hoses and my cord and stuff will slide down and get away from me so these are staying. That's a good thing. But anyway, I'm going to get the old trusty grinder here going and open this up. Well, you guys know I take this very seriously and I don't take this lightly but I can't get to them in any cost-effective manner shy of ripping the roof off this house and that's not cost-effective so I've talked with the homeowner and I've talked with the pest control company that I'm contracting through and the agreement is we're gonna just spray them and you know again not my ever desire not my what I would want to do um, but I'll try to show you the best I can here I'm, I'm about as close in as I can get to them laid up here into this roof um, I don't even know if I can get you guys some video. I don't know if you can see through the darkness to see them up there or not. Um, no, you can see a little comb right there on the left and I can see a little back in here on the right, but they're not giving it to you now, I don't think. Anyway, the problem is this, the framing right there. I can, you know, try to squeeze a finger up there and and touch the comb but I can't effectively cut it out there's just no no way for me to get to it now if you were to come in through the attic you've got expanding foam which I could rip all the expanding foam out but again you've got a two by you got the top of the sill plate of the wall there and then there's only you know about three inches above that so again not something that I can really effectively get my hands down through to cut these combs out and then of course let me get out of this hole I'm in. Of course, the other issue is this roof. 
being the clay tiles like it is. So they are back in here. Basically, basically they're right underneath that corner. Is that focused? Not focused. Focus. Maybe it is focused. Even my phone's dirty. Oh yeah, it's focused. Okay. Anyway, so they're right in, basically, right in here, um, or further back, right in here. So to get to them, you're going through clay tiles. You're going through your um, valley material there. There's just, there's just too much, <laughs> you know. And I hate saying that there's just. Oh wow, look at that! I did not do that. Uh, there's just too much going on in this area um, for it to really, like I said, be cost effective. So talk to the homeowner, talk to the, the pest control company, everyone understands. So now I'm, I'm sitting up here waiting for the pest control guy to show up and he's going to go ahead and exterminate them and then I'm going to do what I can to try to patch the hole back up. And I guess while I wait, I'm going to get up there and Try to caulk that tile for them. That's crazy. See, that's why I would say I don't like these clay tiles. I've been crawling around on all fours trying to spread my weight out. God forbid I crack one. Um, but I'll get up there. I don't even understand how that one breaks. Like, how? I don't know how you get up there. <laughs> I wasn't up there. I was going to be looking around the rest of the roof thinking maybe there's more. They said something, yeah, about the you know, last guy that was up here cracked the tile and caused the roof leak. But I found another, t there's one broken off down there and there's another one right there where I set my ladder up. There's one that was broken that's been caulked back together, but anyway, yeah. So waiting on the pest control guys and then we'll try to get it buttoned up and get out of here. Well, it's not my finest work, but it is what it is. I made it very clear to the homeowner that I was not a finish roofer kind of guy but that I would put the pieces back together and I would grate stuff their access best I could so we had to have I think I already went over it but because of this location I couldn't physically get to the bees through this bottom access nor through going through the insides of the drywall or the attic like I would like to but really the the only effective way to get to them where they were was to go through the clay tile roof um, and talking it over with the homeowners, you know, we agreed it's just, it wasn't cost effective. It's not, you know, she, she wanted to try to save the bees, wanted to get rid of the bees, but, you know, obviously she's not going to spend a fortune and then put the whole thing behind and have to get a roofer out here and everything else. So we punted and went with the extermination. Luckily, the company that I'm working through, they were able to get out here right away and went ahead and sprayed them. Um, and that pretty well knocked them out, you know, right away. There's still some foragers buzzing around here that are that have come back since the chemical was sprayed. Um, so they didn't get picked off, but they can't get back into where they were. They don't want to. They were all clumped up out here. So they could smell something wasn't right, you know. Uh, but anyway, so while I let the chemical kind of do its thing, I ran to Home Depot and uh, just picked up some screws and the great stuff, little bits I needed here to finish it. And then, yeah, I just screwed the same piece that I cut out right back in place. You know, I always try to, I always tell homeowners, you know, I try to make it as clean as possible to put the pieces back in place. It's never going to look pretty, but you know, you can polish it up a little bit, paint over it. Um, and since it's way up here on high roof line, actually I'll try to get a little video here once I get down on the ground and show you, you won't ever even see it from down on the ground. But the great stuff's not pretty. I hate using that stuff in exterior application, but that's really pretty much your only option. Every single roof line, every house, everywhere, where a soffit ties in against the roof like this has that gap, has the potential for bees. And I'll make that clear. Um, not to say that you'll get bees, but every single roof will have that gap um, to where they can get up in that soffit. It's just a matter of whether or not they like your soffit and move in. So, anyway, this one's done, I guess. I'm gonna grab my smoker off the gutter here and pick up the rest of my tools and head home. All right, well. That's it for this one. I've got one bee still buzzing around my face, which she's none too happy with me. I can't hardly blame her. But you can see now, I mean, I'm standing on the ground trying to see where I did that patch job and you can't see it at all. So like you can't see it. I can see where there's a little sheen off the caulk. That's it. I don't even know if you guys can pick it up in the video, but basically 
unless someone's looking for it and looks up their particular wanting to find it, they won't ever see it. And you can't see all that nasty, ugly, great stuff, which is really the, really the problem. So anyway, we are done with this one. I'm going to finish tying things down in the truck and head home.